Okay, well, uh, the Harold van der Linde is head of Asia Equity Strategy at HSBC. He's joining us right now to take some questions. Harold, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much for your time. You know, the 2024 outlook reports are all starting to trickle in. Uh, and uh, the view, which seems to be the base case, is that we will get a, a you know, okayish kind of landing in the U.S., the biggest market, uh, and uh, we'll get lots of rate cuts. What's the view uh, as we kind of approach uh, the end of the year, Harold? No, I think you're absolutely right. So um, uh, it's unreasonable to assume that we're having a, an immediate recession in the U.S. Um, so a soft landing is, is, is a reasonable assumption to be made at, at the moment. I'm a little bit more worried, actually, about the bond yield story. So it's good that these bond yields have come down. And we, we've spoken about this over the last couple of months, that there would be a peak in these bond yields. Now, they've come down from, say, 5% levels to 4.4 uh, levels. Um, so that, that's a substantial decline already. The market is pricing in low interest rates. But we really think that's going to happen in the second half of the year. So we're going to get probably some sense of confirmation of that in the first half of the year, maybe around February or March or so. Uh, until then, we've already pricing in a lot of optimism on these bond yields. So uh, there's probably going to be a bit of volatility coming out of that. So we need to keep an, a close eye on the, on that. But if I look across the region, you've got decent earnings growth as well. India is actually a great example in, in, that, uh, in that regard. Maybe not as strong as, as this year, 2023, but 2024 is going to hold up reasonably well. And that's going to support the, the Asian equities as well. But it, the, the core of the story really seems to be that for Asian equities and Indian equities as well. The global macro, which has been so negative for us over the last two years, starts to move in our favor. Okay. Uh, Harold, hi. Good morning and thanks a lot for joining in. I wanted your thoughts on how you're approaching the IT space now because, you know, you have been a long-term investor in that space in India. Uh, now the narrative is that uh, uh, cooling bond yields as well as the reduction of, uh, so at least a receding recession in the U.S., or the fears of the recession are receding in the US, and all of that will perhaps uh, cause a further up move in IT stocks in India. Would you concur with that view? Yeah, if as long as we can avoid this recession story, then you would think that the the growth outlook for uh, for exporters, which the IT sector in India is right, um, is is maybe muted. It's not going to be very strong next year, but it's not going to be extremely bad either. So that's uh, that, that is somewhat supportive. In general, across the region, I think we're gonna we've we've seen this trend towards moving towards the export sectors, IT in India, maybe to a certain extent, but also Korea and Taiwan have done really good this uh, this year. I think next year we're probably going to move a little bit more towards the domestic oriented sectors. Uh, across Asia, and probably India is not going to be uh, a large exception to that. Mm. Hi, Arul. Good morning. Uh, you know, you've said it that uh, Hello, structurally you. India is looking good. Uh, but, you know, in the near term, we had this discussion the last time around as well, the toss-up between India as well as China. And now those yeah. U.S. yields as well are cooling off. When that happens, you know, you could see the emerging markets that participate. In the near term, do you think uh, China could relatively outperform India at these valuations? Yeah, I think that is a risk for India. So um, if you look, for example, so the Indian market is open. If you look at, for example, the internet names that are trading in Hong Kong, so the Chinese internet names, they have just performed very, very well on the back of that. That's, they are really sensitive to these lower bond yields. So as the global macro improves, that supports China a little bit more than, than India in, in, the, uh, in, in the near term. Uh, but as I said, eventually it's going to come down to earnings as well. And there, I think the story in India is going to be better. We've already seen a lot of that decline in bond yields. So a, a lot of that support for China probably has already been in there. Now, what you see in flows, though, is that people have moved money in the last few months from India. Uh, so we've seen foreign outflows in India towards China. They raised their weightings to China close to neutral. They've cut that a little bit again, actually, and moved to Korea and Taiwan and Japan because, you know, the AI story and the DRAM story is not too bad in those markets. So that's where the money is. So I find it interesting as we go into 2024 that if, for example, China does perform very strong, let's assume that for the moment, and if money gets soaked in, does that then come from India or does that come from Korea, Japan? and Taiwan. And I suspect it might actually be the case that a lot of that comes from there and that people want to stay with India uh, because the growth story there is pretty good. So I, 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 we're, we're betting on that scenario that India uh, will be somewhat isolated from this, but we'll see if we're right on that front. Mm. 
Although, uh, Harold, uh, the, uh, you know, one view is that when, because the, uh, the, uh, the structure which gets money and most markets get money through is the global emerging market cohort. And when that gets money, mm. and China is still the largest weight, uh, weighted market, and when, you know, that gets money, everybody gets money, according to uh, your resp the respective weight for countries. So, uh, I I would you agree with that? I mean, yeah, absolutely. So allocating money, taking away from a dedicated country, yeah. dedicated fund from this to that. I mean, it's largely, it comes into the global emerging market fund pool and then it kind of goes to various countries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 yeah, so there are multiple fl uh, uh, flows at play. First of all, um, as bond yields rise, uh, decline, you see money going into equities globally. Within equities, it goes to emerging markets. Within emerging markets in Asia, it flows around as well. That's what I was talking about. That maybe comes from Korea and, and for example, and, and Taiwan and goes into China. But you're right. There's a lot of talk about uh, emerging markets or Asian markets ex-China, that these funds are, are growing. They're growing rapidly, but they're still very small. They're less than 1% of total AUM. So that, they're not really making a, a massive uh, impact yet. Um, and I think there will be limits to that growth as well. But um, um, so you're right. If, if we see general money coming in, it will be positive for, uh, for all uh, EM markets. And that's what I mentioned. I think the global environment for Asian equities in general, and India is not an exception to that, um, is increasingly positive after it being so negative over the last two years or so. We'll leave, you, leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in. Appreciate your thoughts here on CNBC TV 18.